fortune teller is doomed to death. Three o'clock Saturday, precisely. Puss. Mm. Luca. Baton. Well, you don't seem the sort of chap that to do that. Hmm? Never mind. Take a seat. I shouldn't worry too much. He may not prosecute. You'll have to. Take a look at that handwriting. Do you see uh, nervous apprehension in the breaks between the letters? Hmm? After the F of fortune and the D of doom? I can see the breaks. Uh, Dr. Rosenbaum says the handwriting is disguised by an unnatural backward slope. However, the disguise is comparatively superficial. In the event of it... Um, from which I conclude, written by a short-sighted elderly woman whose education ceased when she left convent school and is habitually impulsive, but lives in a state of nervous apprehension as to the result of her impulses. You wouldn't think it, would you? Hmm, he says it would be interesting to know why she chose herself, chose to sign herself Peak Puss. Surely it is the name of a well-known street. <laughs> Experts. Now, who's in charge in the Peak Puss area? Uh, Peak Puss, uh, Chamel. It's nearly three o'clock now. You better call Chamel and tell him we think it's an obvious hoax. Right. Oh, well, Patron, I have a character called Mascovar in the office. Mm, what's he done? He's an estate agent's clerk who says he stole 2,000 francs from his firm and he's come to give himself up. Uh, why couldn't he do it on a Monday? All right, I'll deal with him. I sent LaPointe round to his employer. He'll be reporting soon. Right. Uh, you're Mascovar, huh? And you uh, stole 2,000 francs from your employer's till. Now, why did you do such a silly thing? Oh, oh, horses and, and cards. Oh. Well, it's only 2,000 francs. Couldn't you offer to pay it back? It, it might be more. How much more? 20,000? 30? M more. <clears throat> Hello, Maigret. Patron, I'm with Monsieur Drouin. He makes no complaint at all. Mascovan's been in his employ for 15 years. He says he hasn't missed any cash. Hello, Inspector. Drua here. No, 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 quite impossible. I've checked the petty cash, not a sou. It might be 30,000 francs. But he has no access to money like that. I hope I'm a patient man, but we're not a shop inspector with a cash register. We are Fouvet and Drua. We deal in land development, the best residential, very large sums. Oh, just nerves, Inspector. Perhaps he smokes in the toilet and fancies he's stolen my time. He's that kind of man. Well, to be honest, he irritates me. Not at all. Patron? I'll be back right away, Patron. Out. You're not going to arrest me. Go home. Have a bottle of wine. Thank you. Come back on Monday and we'll talk about it. Hundred thousand francs. On Monday. <laughs> it's all those English tourists, madame. Paris is full of them this time of the year. Chevalier? Mm. Uh, no, madame Megley. Oh. Yes. Yes. What? No, no. No, no, I haven't forgotten. Yeah, I'm leaving now. Oh, bye. We're going to the cinema. Mm. No, I'm off. What did Chamel say? Uh, why couldn't the lady sign herself Montmartre? <laughs> Have a good weekend. Yeah, duty officer, all you've got to do is to sit there. Mm. Me? No. See you on Monday. Au revoir, Baton. I should don't be. Oh, uh, no point. Baton? Have a good weekend. Hello. Thank you, Patron. Uh, send up my usual two bottles and three chicken sandwiches, will you? Uh, four bottles and six chicken sandwiches. Oh, li little Sir Echo's arrived. Double the order. He wants a picnic. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Saint Georges Division. Murder in the Rue Colincourt. Yes. Right, thank you. Jeanne Picard calls herself a clairvoyant, but unregistered. Clairvoyant. A fortune teller. Call the patron, quickly, hurry. 
So is yours, Division. Quick as you can. Stabbed in the back. Weapon? We're trying to get Dr. Gardell. Evidently, she was gazing into the crystal when she was attacked. I've always wanted one of these. We thought you had one. Who discovered the body, the concierge? Nope. Witness in there, Madame Roy. I've got her papers here. Ginette Francoise Roy, proprietor of the Hotel Beaupigeon at Lausanne. That's up the river. Ten kilometers. Ah, oh, madame. Oh, well, what's this? Belongs to witness. Three fine fat roaches. They were Ooh. such beauties. And I knew how much John was. <laughs> were you a regular client of hers? No. I don't believe in that. Only for fun. <laughs> uh, says she's an old friend. He was bringing her the fish as a present. <laughs> Found the body and gave the alarm. Oh, yes, I know, but which mortuary? Yes. I sent for the locksmith. See if he's on his way. Hello? Doctor? Hello? Shh. I thought I heard a sound. Hello. How long have you been there? Well, well, it's all right, it's all right. We're not going to eat you. What's your name? Have you got any papers? Some papers? Octave Le Gorgon. Married, master mariner, retired. From Barkishi 13. Now, Captain. Have you got any tobacco? Cigarette, Luca. No, no, tobacco. Hmm. Well. Maybe it's not for chewing. Not for chewing. You needn't tell my wife. Oh, no. Now, why are you here, Captain? I was told to come in here. Who oh, by? Marie. Who? Oh. She said, the, the, the bell rang. She said, I haven't got a booking. I hope it's a horoscope. Marie gets extra for horoscopes. Oh, this is Jeanne Picard. Why do you call her Marie? Come on, old man. We'll take you home. Huh? Your wife must be wondering where you are. This is Marie. Easy, easy. Come on, Captain. <sighs> Come on. Take it easy, take it easy. Mm. Have you had enough? <clears throat> oh, eat it, my darling. He will if you don't. That's him at last. Madame Le Clogon? Has he been in trouble? You could say that. He's always wandering. One day he'll walk into the traffic and be killed. Thank you, Monsieur. Uh, Chief Inspector Maigret, criminal justice. Do you know a fortune teller named Jean Picard? I do not. Why? We found him in her apartment. She was dead. Where's he been? Never mind, Giselle. Go on, go in. Give him his tea. Come in, Papa. What are you telling me? Somebody killed her. She was murdered. Please, my daughter. She is very sensitive. I will tell her later. I'd like to meet her now. Monsieur. Sit down, Papa, and have your tea. Where have you been all this time? You haven't been naughty again, have you? Giselle, my daughter. Monsieur? 
So? My husband had a stroke a year ago, to be quite frank. Well, what happened to his hand? Oh, an accident, chopping wood. Here? No, in the south, in San Rafael. We lived there for many years. But after his stroke, he... Giselle, that's all the sugar there is. You're noticing that the furniture doesn't fit? It's all from my villa at San Rafael. Uh, this is a beautiful desk. Belonged to my great-grandmother. We lived on a larger scale there, but of course here in Paris it's... Yes, uh, this would be your handwriting? Yes, you can, you can uh, detect the convent education. <laughs> it's strange, monsieur, since I was educated privately by an English governess. My daughter, too. Hmm. And neither of you has heard of this Jean Picard. No, monsieur. We are not in the habit of frequenting fortune tellers. Thank you, madam. I won't ask him any more questions. He likes his food, doesn't he? He's been out all day. Just wandering about. Uh, once he got into the zoo. Once we had to fetch him from a girl's school. Mm -hmm. How much money did he have on him? When he I have no one? idea. At the moment, he hasn't the price of a bus man. Well, he was given his pocket money. Fifteen francs a week. Thank you, madame. Look after him well. Don't let him wander again. Monsieur. What is it? What's happened? Could have been him. I thought you said he was dark. <laughs> he was. Couldn't have been. This one looks a bit like him. He's only got one eye. <laughs> Are you sure you're trying? You can. Just a minute. Oh, it's you. He's not back yet, that's all. Right. Saint Raphael, near the police, sir. Saint Raphael in the Alt Maritime. Hurt you. All right, I'll hold on. Excuse me, Patron. I've got Emma Dubois next door. Who's she? The girl from the dairy opposite the fortune tellers. Oh. She's seen a green sports car parked outside the house a few times, and she saw it again yeah. today at three o'clock. She saw the driver? Yes, she says he's youngish, dark, sharp dresser, gray suit, buttonhole. She once saw him carrying field glasses, so I've shown her the racing section from the rogues gallery. Good, good. But uh, I can't get her to take it seriously, Patron. Let me know when Saint Raphael comes through. All right. That's where you should be looking. Now, where do you come from? Alsace. Now, back you'll go to Alsace if you waste any more of my time. Now, this man that you saw, he speak to you? Do you speak to him? Once, he waved. Mm-hmm. You wave back? Well, there's no harm in that. Now, let's start again, shall we? And remember, a woman has been killed, alone here in Paris. Stabbed, here. It might have been you. Saint Raphael, that's all. Hello, Mikael. Saint Raphael. And to you, old friend. <laughs> Sorry to spoil your siesta. Siesta. See, si oh, never mind. Look, I want full particulars of a family named Le Cloagon. Le Cloagon. That's right. He's a retired master mariner. Uh, married, daughter. Moved to Paris about a year ago. 
Huh? Well, I appreciate it. it's a Saturday afternoon, but uh, I'd be infinitely obliged to you. Good. Thank you. And to your wife. Oh, uh, where have you been? With the compliments of Inspector Larouche. Ah. <laughs> I had to wait for Dr. Goodell. He was spending the weekend at the mob. We got him out of there, he went straight back. Says it was the only cool place in Paris. One bundle mm. of letters, all addressed to Marie Bonhomie, all signed Papa, down mm. in the bed table drawer. Dear Marie, I hop, hope. Oh, see if Rosenbaum can find peak push in that one. Think that's a man? Now, Emma, close your eyes. Forget about this picture. Hmm? Now, think of that man that you saw. Think of when he waved to you. Think hard. Open your eyes. Is that him? Sure. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. When do you go to work again, Monday? No, I have to go in on Sunday morning because of the milk. Oh, well, you can forget the milk this Sunday. It's all right, I'll explain to your employer. Now, what I want you to do is to go home and stay there. You needn't be afraid, we'll have someone looking at you. Can it be him? Uh, no, it can't. The point, arrange protection for Mademoiselle Dubois. Yes, Prince Our general call of that man. Je stand de Toulon. Yeah. A sex killing. No, I don't think it is. Laporte's arranging protection for the girl. Sarah Fell will be coming through with news about the Le Cloragon family. Mm -hmm. Meantime, what a tale on them. Mother, daughter, Giselle, and the captain. Where do I go from here? Fishing? Mm -hmm. Fishing. Roach. Roach. Ah. Telephone my wife. Tell her to bag a weekend bag for two. We're going up the river. To the Hotel Beaupigeon Morsan, eh? Yeah. How would you guess? <laughs> what was the name, Madame Roy? Uh, Roy. Yeah. Rocket 6280. Your dinner, madame? Oh, yes, we did. It was superb. You have found what you wanted, mm. monsieur? Madame. According to this, your friend Jean Picard came down here seven times last year. And only once, this. Yes, I know. Why, madame? We quarreled. I want to be quite frank. There was disagreement over a bill. But I still regarded Jeanne as a friend. That is why I went off to Paris today. Yeah. The fish was to be a surprise. Did she ever bring a crystal ball down here? Once I persuaded her, for a circle of friends only. Mm -hmm. Do you remember who they were? Ah, uh, it was last year. Regulars, you understand. Mm -hmm. uh, Monsieur Blaise was there. Blaise, just a minute. This one comes down every weekend. Yes, for the fishing. That's him with his adore who looks after the boats. Monsieur Blaise is probably going out tonight. Uh-huh. Hello? Is he? Yeah. Monsieur? Oh, excuse me. If you would like to dance, monsieur, it is only five francs supplement. Excuse me. You don't want to dance, do you? Uh, early bed. Good night, madame. Monsieur? Good night, madame. Yeah. Oh, beauteous. Feel that weight. 
With my compliments, madame. Thank you. All with my own little hook. Well, to tell you the truth, they don't eat very well. The enjoyment's all in the catching of them. I find the same thing. Isidore. Sir? Would you like to take me out this morning? You don't fish, monsieur? Isidore, how much did uh, Blaze pay you to net those fish? Monsieur? They never tasted the hook. If a gentleman wants to make an impression on his friends, and he can pay for it. Who lives in those villas on the other side? Yeah. Uh, in the Chartres Rive. Beranger, an old couple. The Villa Litka, that's the Jacobis. He's a dentist. And the Villa Verdi, I don't know. It used to be an American with the United Nations. Yes, Lapointe. Yeah? He did what? Arrested Madame Le Clorgo. All right, tell... Uh, yeah, tell Sergeant Luca uh, I'd like him to meet me at the Gare Austerlitz in 90 minutes. Oh. Well, hold on, now you've got her. And Lapointe. Keep her amused. Would you care for the illustrated papers? hardly blame him. He was ordered to follow and he did. He says it was quite clear she was hanging around the street corner waiting for someone. It seems they never turned up. It was only when she started back for the house that he spoke to her. Is that when he looked into her handbag? Yes. <laughs> 50,000 bags in notes makes quite a buzz. At this moment she's in my office raising blue murder and threatening to call her deputy. The daughter? Uh, with her. And the captain? Hasn't budged. Oh, uh, this came through from San Rafael. Captain McLogan settled here in San Rafael eight years ago upon retirement. Suffered from a tropical disease of the liver contracted on service. A senior captain to the West African Steamship Company on receipt of pension. Later converted all his holdings to an annuity. Family moved to Paris last June. Until it's his money. Mm. Go to the Boulevard Clichy. We'll talk to the captain first. Not in the kitchen. No. Moved to Paris a year ago. Now, why leave San Rafael? Bad for his health, perhaps? No. Yeah. Tropical disease of the liver. But if they were so concerned about his health then, why do they neglect him so now? He's going about like a tramp. Catching tobacco. Yeah. And another thing. Look, that's a piece of wood, right? And that's a chopper. 
Now I want to see you hurt your hand chopping wood. Well, quite simple. Yeah. Now you cut a finger off your left hand. Mm -hmm. The captain's lost a finger on his right. And so he was left-handed. Maybe. But he took that pinch of tobacco with his right. Did he? He stirs his tea with his right. Ah, oh, where's the captain's cabin? Like a cell. A boat on the outside of the door. Made in the Faubourg Saint Honore. A bad fit for a high class tailor. Cigarette butts. Picked up off the street with it. Look at them. What's your way to there? Elementary seamanship. Where is this master mariner? The patron. Hmm? Is he up aloft? Ah. Captain! Ahoy there! All hands on deck. Well, skipper. What you doing up there? I'm mad. I don't think you're mad. I don't think you're a master mariner either. For one thing, you've got ten good fingers. This will not rest here, I assure you. I shall demand a personal apology. Oh. Be quiet. I have been falsely arrested. Not exactly arrested, 50,000 francs have been fished from my bag. If you would only explain what they were doing there in the first place. That's all. Ah, oh, so he's here at last. I've got Madame Leclerc on her daughter. Bring them in. Yes, Patron. This way, if you please, Madame. Please be seated, Madame. I wish to protest. Surely you can protest seated, mademoiselle? I insist on a reprimand to that officer. First of all, madame, will you please tell me why you had 50,000 francs in your handbag? That is my affair. What was the money for? A purpose, an investment. I am buying a house. On a Sunday? I have to pay a deposit tomorrow morning. Hmm. Where'd you get the money? In the bank yesterday. And you carried it around with you ever since? Is that a crime? It might attract one. Would it have been safer to have left the money in the house? You've seen my husband. He's insane. He might have destroyed it, anything. Do you think your father is insane? But of course she does. But you wouldn't starve him, hmm? humiliate him, keep him locked up in a small room, barely fit for an animal. But that is what he is. Perhaps you've never had to look after a senile imbecile. <laughs> Hello, Maker. He is? All right, I'll come in now. Excuse me. Chief Inspector. The place must have caused the next train up. <laughs> and I hope to catch the next train back. <laughs> I think you're not too surprised to see me. I know. You've come for a fishing license. <laughs> if you only knew how I detest fish. Yeah. Uh, therefore, I suppose you're asking yourself why it is I bother to go down to the Beau Pigeon week after week and mm. tip the boatman to net me some quite uneatable whatever they are. Roach? Ah, thank you very much. Well, now, I will be frank with you, Inspector. There is, on the other side of the river, a little lady. At the Villa Verde. Oh, you already know my secret. Well, now, if uh, I tell you my wife doesn't understand me, you'll laugh at me, won't you? But the sad fact is she understands me only too well. And if the truth of my prowess as an angler was ever to come out... Don't worry. We shall regard it as a state secret. Oh, no, 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 no. Please, not one of those. They have the very nastiest way of getting out. Not this one. It's safe. I am very much obliged to you, and you'll forgive me for descending on you. Oh, monsieur. Oh, why, Inspector. Oh, and uh, if Madame Maigret can ever make use of a fine basket of... Um, Roach. Roach, yes, that's the word. Thank you very much. <laughs> he goes a happy man. Mm. Now, how about the captain? 
Oh, he's fine. Swinging in. He's having a good time, Philippe. All's well. Good. Stay here and look out for squalls. Aye, aye. I have good news for you, madame. You will no longer have to look after the, uh, what was it, senile imbecile. What have you done? Taken him to hospital. He'll be well cared for. You had no right. I demand to see my husband. Where is he? As to your husband, madame, I think you know better than I do where he is. What do you mean? He's dead, isn't he? He died last June in Saint Raphael of a tropical disease of the liver. That madman told you that? His annuity died with him. I suggest that you had him impersonated and moved to Paris. Poor man, that was his delusion. Oh, was it part of his delusion to hide up in the loft whenever anybody called who might recognize him? Yes, he called it his bridge. And to bandage back his finger to disguise the difference in signature? What signature? He had to sign the receipt for the annuity. Oh, another fantasy. Was it fantasy? And the dead fortune teller, Jean Picard, who also came from Saint Raphael, recognized him? Knew him to be an imposter? Was it fantasy when she threatened to blackmail him and he took a knife? No, 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 it Don't isn't true. Don't be a fool. Don't say anything. But he's no more man than you or I. He's sane enough to stand trial for the murder of Jean Picard. Oh, no, I beg of you. He couldn't have killed her. Why not? Because he was his daughter. <laughs> Thank you, mademoiselle. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll have everything. Who is the captain? His name was Bonamine. He was nothing, starving. He was glad to be given meals, a roof. What did I do that was so wrong? My husband was selfish enough to put everything into an annuity. We should have been paupers. Perhaps that is what he wanted. You will find his body in the cellar at San Rafael, under some slabs behind the wine bin. So, the captain told the fortune teller, and the fortune teller told someone who hoped to make 50,000 francs with the information. Who is it? I don't know. I received a message, and I destroyed it. I was told to leave the money in a green sports car parked in the Place Clichy. Lucas, bring in that photo of Justin de Toulon. The car never came? No. Oh, how did you get the message? It was Giselle who received the message. Well? It was in a shop at the Monoprix in the Rue Pascal. A man said, I think you've dropped your bill. And he put a note in my hand. You saw him? No, it was so quick. He put it in my hand and he gave me a sort of wink and turned away. Yeah. It was crowded. Is this the man? No, I, I don't think so. You sure? I don't know. I hardly saw him. Well, you must have noticed something about him. His, uh, his clothes, was he dark, fair? What about his eyes? You saw him wink. Ah. Right, you guy, might as well show the gallery. Uh, hmm? What about uh, the man we had in here yesterday with a tick? He was winking. Yeah, the little clerk who wanted to give himself up, remember? Moscova. Open up, please. <laughs> police, open up. You, you've come to arrest me? That was what you wanted, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. No, 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 no. The second time I'm forced back to my office this weekend. And all for that nincompoop, that Mascovar. I wish I'd never set eyes on him. That's where he worked. It's 
This is handwriting? Yes, yes. To be called away like this right in the middle of the most important negotiations, this could cost me a million francs. It's already cost one person her life, Monsieur Doyen. Hello, Foubert Dua. Yes, he is. All right. For me? Yes. Maigret? Patrick? I'm at the Saint Martin Hospital. I'm afraid I was too late for uh, Mascovin. Someone was there before me. No, no, no. He died here five minutes ago, stabbed. No, he never recovered consciousness. Pity, Lucas. Could have told us so much. You see, he was big boss. I'm afraid, Monsieur Duguin, that Monsieur Mascovin will not be back. Why, what's happened? Dead. Dead? Did he have any relatives? I believe there's a sister in the country, an invalid. Once he asked for a day off to visit her. Mm -hmm. You have to keep any of them? Oh, he never said very much. One hardly knew he was here. We'll hardly know he's gone. What sort of work does he do here? Shops, apartments, small clients. Small clients, yeah. He'd know about the bigger ones? He could get to know, yes. Mm. Have you any further questions, Inspector? No. No. Would you consider Monsieur Blaise among your bigger clients? Blaise? No. Perhaps he, he's a wealthy man. He often inquires. So far, he hasn't bought. Not the Villa Verdi? But that's owned by an American. But rented by Monsieur Blaise? Well, an agent must know when to be discreet. Uh, I believe it's a question of. Uh, I know. A lady. I'll go to bed early and I'll come back as early as I can tomorrow. Yes. All right. Speak well. Your husband not returning? No, I'm afraid not. In that case, if you're leaving very early tomorrow, perhaps you'll do me the honor to be my passenger to Paris in my car. Thank you. That is kind of you. My pleasure, madame. Madame Dubois, there is, I believe, uh, a picnic basket. Yes, monsieur. It has been sent up to your room. Would you like to join the dancers again? Would you like to? You won't mind if there are some extra passengers in the car, some freshly caught brooch. <laughs> <laughs> you say eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. Fish not biting. Maigret, you're up early. I'm interested in a piece of property. This one. The agent said that you held the lease. Yes, but surely they told you uh, it's occupied. Yeah. Apparently by a very hungry little lady.
a long way to go. Monsieur? Passport. Food. No money. There's 50,000 francs there. You may keep it, Inspector. That's just the amount of the first squeeze. Eh? I'm talking of blackmail, Monsieur Blaise. You run it on business lines, hmm? don't you? The partner, paid informants like the fortune teller, Jean Picard, the clerk, Mascouvain. Hmm? You are the brains. Justin does the dirty work, like keeping the informant in line. Justin? Justin de Toulon. Jean Picard threatened to uh, give the game away, so she was disposed of messily with a knife. <laughs> All this is fascinating. Yeah, isn't it? You know, the mistake that you made was in telling Muscovan beforehand. I can see the point of it. Put the fear of God in him, but you overdid it. The poor little frightened worm tried to warn us in the only way that he could. No need to watch the window, Monsieur Blaise. Justin passed the Porte Dauphine only half an hour ago, so we still have a few minutes. See, I'm trying to work out how you connect me with all this rigmarole. I mean, I, I've never heard of this Justin, believe me. Who's all this for? Oh. I have a confession to make. Really? Another? That's two in two days. This is for me. I admit, Inspector, I'm not entirely what I seem. Mm. In short, I am that most unfortunate creature of circumstance, the absconding financier. Well, certain negotiations, I needn't trouble you with the details, have proved less profitable to some of my associates than um, they would have wished. Hmm. So, in fact, the sooner I find myself in Switzerland, you, you understand, I need to go any further. Do you? Oh. My car is in the garage underneath, and I was about to effect the exchange when you... Yes, I... you'll have me apologizing soon. This passport isn't very like you. The workmanship nowadays. Yeah. The same with everything, isn't it? Look at these. Get up, Mr. Blitz. Hmm? Shocking fit. But just right for Justin. You stand. I tell you, I don't know the man. Inspector, a moment ago I mentioned a sum of money. Now, I, I admit it was insulting. Supposing I were now to say 200,000 francs. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You know you have me at a disadvantage. It is absolutely urgent that I reach Switzerland by tomorrow morning. It's worth one million francs to me if you let me go now. All right, the one is passing. You'll hear Justin turn into the drive. Hmm? And you pull up. And he'll get out, and he'll go to the front door. You'll hear his footsteps in the hall, and this door will open. I shall be uh, in here, I think. Then he'll come into the room, and the first thing he'll smell, a double cross. My guess is he's a very suspicious man already. He's been expecting you to betray him for some time. After all, you only get prison, with the money waiting for you when you come out. He gets the guillotine. He'll be on guard, he'll go to the window, he'll look out, and he'll see one of my men not quite concealed in the shrubbery. And being a hasty man, he'll panic. Two million. I can find it.
Inspector, what do you want? Justice, Monsieur Blaise. I want to see you dead. Inspector, open this door. Open. I'll make a statement, but you want to protect me. I'll confess to everything I've done, but he killed the woman. I didn't tell him to. He's a killer. You know he's a killer. No, no, no. Don't let him come in here. Oh, Justin. No. No, Justin, it, it was all a mistake, Justin. Muscovang found it. No, no, Justin. No, no, no. Rewind for a play bracket. Oh. You see, Monsieur Blaise, Justin never left Paris. He shot it out with the police there two hours ago. Now he's toes up in the morgue. I needed that statement of yours. I hope you will forgive my peasant methods. I'll make a statement, but you've got to protect me, see? I'll confess to everything I've done, but he killed the woman. I didn't tell him to. He... He wanted to, he's a killer! You enjoyed your dinner? Oh, it was superb. And Vilas was the biggest fish caught in the neighborhood. Uh, not quite the biggest. <laughs> the dancing is only five francs something. Yeah. Shall we walk? You can try.